Hello, everyone, and welcome to Behind the Music. It's good to have you with us again. And uh, Clive, just want you want to say hello as well. Yeah, hi, everybody. Welcome to Behind the Music. Thank you for joining us, those of you on the GX platform, Facebook, and YouTube. Thank you very much. We have an exciting guest for you. This guy, uh, all I can say is be prepared for anything. This, this guy is just phenomenal, man. He's such a character. Lovely guy, man. Lovely guy. Jeff? Thank you very much, Clive. Yes, uh, without further ado, uh, we have the pleasure of um, joining us today, a very special uh, guest, very special to me. Um, I've been, uh, been absolutely privileged to do a lot of stuff with this guy. Uh, we're going to bring him to the room to discuss uh, his his music history and uh, just to share his thoughts on music, um, uh, Patrick Hepburn. So Patrick, if you're out there, uh, come in and join us, man, and uh, let's just like share a good time here. Patrick, how you hey. doing? Hello, Jeff. Hello, Clive. Hello, hey, listeners and viewers. <laughs> Lovely to have you on, Pat. Lovely to have you on. Thank you. Lovely to be here. Yes, cool. lovely to be here. Good. Uh, Patrick, uh, it's, it's wonderful to have you here. We're going to spend a bit of time just like uh, talking to you about uh, music. It's great to have you on. I mean, I've yes, obviously sir. been very privileged to uh, do some stuff and work with you. But, but Patrick, where did it all begin for you? Where did all this begin? Well, obviously as a child, I was introduced to music from my parents. You know, the old stereogram we would hear. Uh, uh, music on a Sunday, Jim Reeves and so forth and so on, and uh, Elvis Presley, and then <laughs> hey, later on, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. around. <laughs> you know, he wasn't doing. No, no, no. When he was, uh, when he was walking in the light, the yeah. time, and then he kind of drifted a little. He did, bless yeah. him, Father. But yeah. anyway, he did a lot of gospel music, yeah. and then right. later on, around the age of seven, my dad. Um, well, I noticed an, an acoustic guitar and he knew three chords and he, he just kept playing those three chords and I internalized it. So that was my first introduction that I can remember of music. And then it continued to progress on to school and other places. I can give you more details. Just tell me when to stop. No, that's fine. You want me to carry on? <laughs> I can tell you. So then, at, as I say, from seven, I moved on. And then uh, the next uh, most significant change was when I went to Aston Manor School in the 70s. And I met people like Selwyn Howe, uh, okay, Lester okay. Davis, Errol Howe. And these yeah. are all musicians, guitarists, because their, their dad was a pastor and, and they were, you know, involved in music in that respect. And a chap, a good, a dear friend of mine, um, Elvis Campbell. Um, AKA Chad Harris, some of them you were known by that name. And these guys kind of shared their perspective on music, their ability and their the, uh, acuity. It was just phenomenal. So that, and then we started doing, um, I can say, assemblies. Mm -hmm. and, and I remember performing um, Waiting in Vain, Bob Marley. And, yeah. and, and, and then the meteoric rise just took off from there. And then eventually, when I turned about 13, 14, I was involved in a youth uh, group. That was run by the father of the phenomenal musicians Martin and Stuart Trotman. Oh, their right. Dad, okay. Their dad, Bob Trotman, was the senior right. youth worker at the Birchville Gospel Hall in Aston, Birmingham, England. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> just to be clear, and so uh, that's where I linked up with some more friends who we then started a band there with a chap by the name Ian Moore, Sonia Wilson. Sherry Bino and various others, and we started doing reggae gospel. There you go. Wow. So how hey, long ago wow. was this? So what sort? Of, how long ago was this? What sort of year was this? What sort of decade? I can tell you the years. Um, that the music start. That was 1970. Oh, it's two, seven, three, seven, four, seventy-five, seventy-six. Wow. Around wow. seventy-six. That's when I started going to the the youth the youth club. Yeah. And then um, in seventy-nine. I then went into sound systems, mm -hmm. so you know, bought big speakers. Well, we yeah. actually built the speakers in the back garden, and dad wow. coming in and saying, "Boy, you mash up my house, you know, look how you crack up the ceiling." About a fifteen-inch uh, subwoofer in my bedroom with a three hundred watt power amp. So that's what we were doing sound systems. So I was very much involved in reggae music while still playing, and then 
1982, I came to faith and I left the sound system to one side. So wow. was reggae music a big influence on you? Was that massive. your main influence then or were you open to other? Massive, massive. Mass I was open to others, but I didn't know. Reggae music was definitely the driving force. I used to listen to Top of the Pops. We used to listen to reggae, reggae uh, on a Sunday with Erskine T. Uh, yeah. and, and I very much used to enjoy that. Um, that was local radio. But mm. it was definitely reggae music. But it wasn't until I came to the Church of God of Prophecy, uh, Aberdeen Street, Winston mm. Green, UK, Birmingham, <laughs> where I met people <laughs> like um, like the, the Watson family. I don't yeah. know if you know any of them, like sure. Hazel, rest her soul, Joy, sure. rest her soul, and and um, Robin, and... Uh, yeah. What name there? Merrick on drums. Merrick, and, yeah. and Vindel. And these yeah, guys were really yeah. into jazz music. They were into yeah. that level, level 42 and uh, Earl Clue and blah, blah, blah. So I then, okay. my, my musical perspective started to broaden. I thought, wow, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. And then in the 80s, very early 80s, I then went to music college, as uh, Joseph Chamberlain Sixth Form College. And then I was introduced to more so classical music mm -hmm. uh, in, in a, yes, uh, I can, an academic from an academic perspective. I've always liked classical music, strangely mm. enough. It was very weird for a young black man to like uh, a classic <laughs> one. I used to listen to it on a Saturday on my big speakers, <laughs> crazy stuff. Oh. Then that definitely influenced me as well. So classical I moved on from music. Jobs. Sorry? Classical music coming out of a sound system. Uh, absolutely. Uh, wow. well, well, I didn't play it in there, but I, I, I had a propensity for different styles and genres of music from yeah. a very early stage. No one had to tell yeah. me to, uh, to value and appreciate it. So sure. I liked classical music, love jazz music, love reggae music to my heart and soul because yeah. that's what I was into when I was doing that's sound system. One, yeah. Definitely, so yeah. I, you know, Aswad was definitely my number one band. Yeah. I, I knew the guys in Steel Pulse, um, and 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 uh, you know, I was asked to play for Bashara as well, who did that famous. Well, might not be famous to you. Bashara did the track called "Men Cry To," um, and I had to turn that down because I did, they didn't need another bass guitarist as well. I was playing guitar at the time. So all this time, I was just playing rhythm guitar. Right. It wasn't until I came to Aberdeen Street, I have to tell you this now, came to Aberdeen Street, and the phenomenal musicians there, there was Vince McCullough and Josh McCullough. I'd never heard anybody play rhythm guitar like this yeah. man. I was warned by a friend of mine when I became a Christian. He said, when you go to Prophecy, watch out, because they play sevenths, ninths, diminished, augmented, they're going to flood your brains. And I go, yeah, it'll be all right. I heard it firsthand. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I immediately dropped six-string guitar and went to bass. <laughs> in 1982. Yeah, I couldn't. I said, I can never the play like that. The easiest way out. The easiest way out. Yeah. And yeah, I went to bass guitar. Bass. And I really, you know, excelled. As I believe I excelled in bass guitar. Yeah. And then later on, I realized it wasn't rocket science. But yeah. then it was in the um, mid. It would have been after I got married, um, bless, bless the Lord, night today, well, not today, this year will be 30 years. Wow, uh, bless you, man. Uh, yeah, back, man. To God be the glory. And um, my wife's friend was a bass guitarist, came to the house around about 92, Ooh. and she began to share with me something I'd never read in scripture, and it was with regards to the dedicating of the Temple of Solomon. Oh wow! And she shared that the ministers were of, of the Levitical priesthood who were, were ministering, and uh, you may remember the story. I don't want to go into too much detail, but effectively, the presence of God was so immediate uh, that the minister had to stop what they were doing just yeah. to, and the term Shekinah glory. Yeah. And I was yeah. just mesmerized. Yeah. She was saying, "Music did this." Yeah, and that yeah. opened my mind to another perspective that I had never considered. And yeah. so then I start to investigate and later on, I began to realize the power of music. I bought books on music ministry mm -hmm. um, and then looking at the word muse, the etymology of the word music, which comes from mm -hmm. the word muse, which means to, um, to, to meditate, to think, then, yeah. to, to ponder. Yeah, you to know? Ponder, and yeah. So these are the things that I start to realize there's a real power and yeah. uh, influence in mm -hmm. music and it yeah. was uh, by yeah. divine construct. So um, in 1993, um, um, Ron Canoli came to the BCC yeah. uh, and did a praise and worship seminar. And there I saw, my wife and I saw a flyer by an organization called Samadhi International. 
Okay. Mm. And we thought, and it says, Thanksgiving, praise and worship as a lifestyle. That resonated with me straight away um, because some other things had been brought to my attention. I went, this sounds like truth. So we did the course mm. and that was a, a major revelation because it was very much Bible-based, theologically sound about the importance and value of music to facilitate worship. Mm. That was the primary role uh, designated to music. Not so much for entertainment or make it feel yeah. good. It was to venerate the one who had created that yeah. very uh, method of, of communication, because music is a form of communication. So, but is it, sorry, Patrick, but is it fair to say that then this helped to change your, your direction with what you wanted to do with music and your approach to music? It gave direction. I didn't have hey. a direction. Right. I didn't have wow. one. I was just playing, but when I when I was exposed to this ideology, mm. sorry if, if anybody's offended, but to some it might be from an academic standpoint, a, a, a thought pattern, a way of constructing things. Once I was uh, exposed to that, I realized, man, you got to take this to the next level. And I mm. know to a degree, I don't have to go into any detail. It it made me appear like a bump on the log in my local church, and I was a little bit. Oh, like OTT, Patrick's taking this mm. thing too serious. Um, I make sure when I come to church, I, I bring I bring a guitar strap. I don't know how I can sit down in the presence of God and play my guitar. That was me. I was a bit, I don't yeah. know, a bit liturgical. <laughs> but I was just so excited about what yeah. I was doing for God, and yeah. I had to express that. Yeah. And so in doing the course, then my wife and I went on to, kind of one of the qualifications of doing the Psalmody International course is that you then – have the ability to disseminate that, to teach it. And okay. so my wife and I, I don't know, Jeff, you were one of the less, one of the courses as well, if I remember correctly. Cool. And we were doing that at Aberdeen Street. And that gave me immense joy to see people's eyes open to the power of music, that it's not just the guys who just plug in, or the wasn't many sisters to be fair, but the guys who plug in, play music for convention and just give them a party and a, and a, a tango <laughs> and everything all right. No. Yeah. <laughs> this, this was it, and it didn't. And it didn't matter whether they were walking with God or not. Mm. As long as I can play E C G and play in time, yeah. you see. Yeah. To me, music is not a cliche where it says music is ministry. It is a mm. powerful, powerful yeah. ministry yeah. that has the the potential to to bring healing, deliverance without a word being spoken. Oh, no. Music anointed yeah. is, on, is no. nothing like it. Yeah, N nothing like oh. it. Patrick, um, yes, you you have actually um, wanted to talk around two tracks of music, and we're going to go to Indeed. the first one. And 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 while we play a little bit of that, I'm just going to ask you just to um, think about why that one was special, and just share that with with, with the audience as to why that was special. So we're going to go to that that track now, um, if we can, and uh, the viewer just listen out for just listen out for this. We bless you, Lord Jesus. We worship you, O oh Father. For you alone are worthy, you alone are for us you make a vision to come into your presence and bring sacrifices of praise. Bring sacrifices of praise. Your 
What a great track. Patrick, so mm. t t mm. tell us about this. Well, it, 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 every time I hear it, it takes me back. It, yeah. it was born out of Psalm 100. Yeah. Uh, Enter his gates with thanksgiving, in his courts with praise, we give thanks, and Hebrew with Barak, his holy name. So this was the format that was brought through through the psalmody school. And uh, one of the things that was taught was that it may not be written in scripture, but he said, God's spirit's always singing. God's always singing. In Hebrews, it talks about Jesus worshipping in the midst yeah. of the church. Yeah. So God loves music. And what we were taught to do, he says, you can actually read scriptures and just sing any melody that comes to your mind. Let the spirit just lead you. Yeah. And so we realized that we all had the potential to write songs. And that song was very much an expression of my desire to to be in close proximity with, with Father. I know theologically I've moved on a little bit because we don't necessarily, necessarily come into his presence, but we, we inculcate the presence of God with us. So we're always in his presence, technically speaking. Mm. So I will change it. When I do release it, I will change the word slightly. But, um, but the, the, ESO, the ethos of it is very much, you know, to, to recognize the, the sovereignty, the majesty, the glory of God and, yeah. and, and the work of Christ. So that's... Yeah. Where it all came from, primarily from the Psalmody International course. Wow. That is absolutely fantastic. You know, I I had the, the the opportunity to to actually go to that, and it, it did actually really open my eyes to kind of the place in music, uh, in worship, and um, in giving a God praise. And interestingly, you just sort of mentioned about you know the, the Lord singing today. I was actually at a, a, at a worship session. And um, that was one of the things that came up when he talked about, you know, when Jesus was um, in the last, in, in, in the night in which he was betrayed, he also, uh, before he got taken away, he actually sang with his disciples. And wow. it's amazing to think that Jesus was standing there mm -hmm. in the upper room, you know, in the room with all his disciples and they sang a hymn together. Sing. And I, I really Amen. wonder what it was like. I know what the men like to sing in my church, but, you know, it, it must be fantastic for, you know, the writers to, to do that. So, you know, what a fantastic Amen. thought mm -hmm. that, that, that 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 was. And and, and so uh, that that kind of musicianship in, in, in your life, Patrick, and you said um, sort of changed the way that you looked at, you know, music and, and the, the way you did. Um, what what now, and you said you moved on a little, what, how, do, how do you see now then? Well, well, if I go back a, a, a step, in, in terms of musicianship and excellence, some of the main musicians that in, in, encouraged me, Josh McCullough, yeah. rest his soul, yeah. Trevor Prince, rest yes. his soul, Lester yeah. Davis, yes. rest his yeah. soul. These guys had such a positive influence on my life when I saw their, their, their ability to, to translate what was in them through their yeah. guitars, yeah. that blew me away. Um, in terms of bass, it was um, Alvin Ewing. Yes, who, who taught me just keep it simple sometimes, and and just and let the music speak by itself. And he was very much a positive influence for me. So so that supported me in understanding. It's not about a show. It's <laughs> it's about facilitating worship. Primarily, that's what it's about. I don't have an issue with musicians who play secular music, so long as they love the Lord and their yeah. light shines where they are. Yeah, because I did have a gripe with that many years ago. I did. I, I put my hand up. You're not supposed to play rag music. That's what I was told. But I, I, I've, I've rubbed shoulders with these guys, like Lester, bless yeah. his heart, like, like Paul yes. Reed, rest yeah. in peace again. And these guys yeah. shared with me their yeah. witness through yeah. their lifestyle, even though they were playing secular. So that's just a side thing. I'm not decrying and saying you can't play secular music. No, just, but you must. A, your light must shine. So it's just to echo that, you know, it, it's interesting that you should say that because um, there was a time, I'll be honest, I had a, an issue with it as well. And then um, I, I read a testimony um, based on how Abraham de Boreal and yeah. Um, yeah. Alex Lacuna yeah. and yes. how these guys yeah. came into the mm -hmm. kingdom. And again, yeah. we had Mike Brown on last week, who's another phenomenal 
yeah. guitarist yeah. Who, who does Absolutely. a lot of secular and gospel work. Wow. And he was George yeah. Michael's guitarist from 2003 and until his death, his passing. And he shared with us how he held George Michael's hand and led prayer. Wow. Yeah, Amen. he told George, I'm a Christian. George said that was a good thing. Every show, Michael would have the opportunity yeah. to open in right. prayer. Yeah. Mm. So you're right. Yeah, as mm. long as they let their light shine. And like Mike said last week, not going to take too much time on this, but he made a very, very valuable point. Not everybody God can send to that side because someone come back. God knows who we can send. Amen. And we definitely heard last week that through Mike Brown, that he's definitely one of them that God has sent to go into that arena, step in and come out. So, yeah, truly, we, yeah, we need to um, hold these guys up in prayer. I mean, God is definitely obviously using them, allowing for his purpose, you know. So, Amen. yeah, yeah. Um, sure. Definitely. I would just like to again shout out to all of those who are listening today. Uh, we, we've we got Patrick Hepburn speaking with us as a special guest today. And uh, a couple of people are just writing in. I'd like to say hi to, to Owen and also Andre, who have uh, definitely given shouts out here. Just want to say welcome to the program and hope you're enjoying it. Um, Patrick, there was another track that you actually uh, wanted to share with us. And um, again, we're going to share that with the viewers and listeners. And uh, again, I'm sure you've got a story behind this one to, to just like share with us. But uh, while that track's getting ready, I'd just like to say as well that um, uh, Patrick actually introduced me to uh, Lester Davis many, many years ago. And in fact, um, uh, Patrick actually called me to join in a session with them. And um, Lester was one of the most phenomenal guitarists I've ever met, but somebody who was just like so drawn mm. to the Lord as well. Yes. So, you know, yes. um, I, I'm humbled to kind of know these guys as well. So, Patrick, I'd like to say a big thank you to you for kind of introducing me to them. Yes. But now we're going to play that, that, that second track, Patrick, and give you a chance just to share with the listeners your thoughts on mm. that one. Courtesy of Desita Davis, 47 Willows Road, Cannon Hill, Birmingham B129QE. Nice Thank you. 
Track, great track, so lovely yes. guitaring on that man. That is just like wicked. Hey, this guitar is packing. I sold that guitar. I'm so upset. Oh. <laughs> yes. So, so tell us about the track, Patrick. Tell us about the track, man. Right. First of all, it was it was it was transcribed by Deceita Davis, who was one of the original attendees for the Somali International Course. When we found out about it, we invited um, Jacita. And she, I just quickly checked out where she got it from, and it's actually uh, from the book of Exodus, chapter 15, and um, yeah, verse 11. Who is like thee, O Lord, among the gods? Wow. Who is like thee? So wow. this is Moses. So effectively, yeah. that was the first collaboration I'll ever done because she did the words and she did us kind of singing thing and i just put the music together so that was the first collaboration i ever did with a musician in terms of gospel so did you music. Do the guitar and the bass i'm playing pretty much everything that's my everything. wife that's singing <laughs> okay so, yeah yeah okay. I, I played the guitar bass and then uh, and did the drum programming as well right because okay. uh, back in the 80s i used to do a lot of um, studio work at the joseph mm. chamberlain sixth form college okay and uh, they had like a fully kitted studio, but it was all analog those days. So we were using the Tascam reel-to-reel -reel system. Oh, yeah, yeah, old school, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Old school stuff. So, but yeah, pretty much I played bass, primarily bass, and then rhythm, and, and then touch a little bit on lead guitar. But that, that song was very much, as I say, collaboration. And they sang it in convention, one of the conventions in Prophecy as well, which is really Fantastic. nice to hear to that construct. Yeah, so nice. And just a big shout out to Owen Uriah, who allowed yeah. me to play and minister with him live in back in 2020. And I found the mini disc recording, which I did on a hard drive recording. He was blown away. <laughs> it's such an honor. He's such a humble brother. Beautiful yeah. voice. Yeah, I, I, you really know, what? I love that guy, man. Pastor Owen yeah, Uriah. Yeah. Yeah, man. I love that guy, man. Yeah, for real. For real. I, I plenty he regularly time. tunes in and encourages us as well on yeah. the show. So, yeah. Love this yeah. guy. Listen. We're gonna to have to wrap up soon, but listen, Patrick. Indeed. Yes, sir. So, in in where where you are now, um, mm -hmm. musically and as a Christian, yeah. Yes, sir. Um, what parting words would you have um, to encourage our guests at this time? We all know we're in a pandemic, and um, yes, you know, but like you said, you know, God worships god sings and he and i always tell the viewers you know god just wants to be your friend first and Amen. foremost i want you to encourage our listeners as we're about to wrap up okay uh, i'll be as brief as i can yeah absolutely your music should be the demonstration of your love for for father mm -hmm. um yeah second thing you in order to be a success you must have a successor. So what you're doing, you must build others. You must build yeah. them up and give them the ability and uh, uh, equip them to do what they need to do. Mm. <clears throat> and the last thing, definitely, which is the foundation of the whole Christian teaching, um, mm. the question was asked, what is the greatest commandment? To love God and love your neighbor as yourself. Mm. And I remember I asked some musicians to uh, support my wife and I at a... A wedding and um, I asked all the musicians there just to spend five minutes just to tell me why they do what they do why they play and all of them made comments but one person said something that has never left me and this is the best part of 30 years this musician said to me the ethos behind my music is preferring one another in love yeah. and that was shared by brother Jeff right there who is wow. co-hosting with you. It has never left me. And I'm not just saying that for a joke. That is the foundation. It's yeah. got to be love, yeah. the love of God. Yeah. He said, yeah. prefer, prefer one another yeah. in love. 
Yeah. That was my closing words. Yeah. Jeff? Patrick, uh, we spoke about this on many occasions and um, I'm deeply touched by that sentiment. Um, and I know it's not for both, and I don't take it as that. But what I do say is that um, in all my years playing, uh, Patrick has been probably one of the most genuine, and I'm not saying other musicians aren't genuine, but I'll tell you why I think he's genuine as a musician. He is able to positively criticise and positively, constructively assist anybody who has a passion to do something for the Lord. And he's not driven by uh, ability, technical skill, um, knowledge prowess. He's driven by his love and compassion and passion for the Lord. And that shows through in everything you do. So Patrick, thank you for that. But I'm truly amazed that, you know, I've had the opportunity to work and hopefully work with you again. Patrick is doing yeah. a lot of stuff uh, and we've, you know, we, we shared. And I know that he has a passion for the Lord and it comes from oh, his man. heart. So God bless you, Patrick. Um, thank you. And uh, yeah, listen, I know Patrick's got a lot more to say. We're going to have to invite yeah, him know that. Yeah. <laughs> to join us. I mean, I, I must admit, Patrick is a joker. My God, this guy <laughs> is like, he's just like, he doesn't have to try. <laughs> but so is he, he's a fantastic uh, uh, pers personality. And um, okay. I just want to thank you again, Patrick. Thank you very much indeed. Pleasure. Chloe, you just send for us. Thank you. Pleasures entirely mine, brothers and sister, Thanks, and it was in the background. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Patrick. Listen, we're going to have to have you on again. Like Jeff said, I know oh. there's a lot more to come out of you and a lot more you'd love to share. Oh, um, you know, but thank you for joining us and, 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 and thank you for imparting and sharing your, your part of your journey. We know there's a lot more. And um, yeah, so God bless you. To, all, to our viewers, thank you for tuning in. We pray and hope that you've been blessed and mm. uh, you can take something away, whether you are a believer or not. Mm. Remember, Amen. be safe. God only wants to be your friend. He loves you. Mm. In spite yes. of everything that's happening around you, God is still in control. Amen. Amen. Still in control. Amen. And you're back. Amen. So, Amen. We're going to so thank you. Please tune back in next week, five o'clock on the GX Radio platform, Facebook and YouTube. Thank you. Behind the music, we're out. God bless you. Peace.